All right, thank you. So our, our philosophy um, at, at the film board and in my studio for the last um, three years has been the creative application of technology to story and form. So I'm just going to play you quickly some projects that we've done over the last two and a half years, just in case you aren't familiar with our work. Just a quick little, uh, little reel here. strength of two tons. I know I'm wearing a, a VHF collar and I have my own radio frequency. They also gave me a number. Bear 71. Banff National Park in the heart of the Canadian Rockies. Bears and humans here live closer together than any other place on Earth. And that explains the radio caller constantly beeping my location to some ranger playing God. There are 15 remote sensing cameras in my home range, plus infrared counters and barbed wire snags to collect my hair. We're here at the mouth of the St. Lawrence River, and uh, we're studying the Peruvian whales. This is a very threatened population. Our home is the biosphere. Every scientist I've talked to agrees with me. We've already passed the 59th minute. Most good. Good morning. Good morning. I was nine, living in Yellowknife, and went there for a hockey tournament. Adam League, 10 and unders. I don't remember much. The 45 minute plane ride, those giant propellers. This isn't the plane. My team's not on it, but it is Pine Point around the time I was there. I think he was about 10 when he started asking for a BB gun. And he just begged and begged my parents until they finally gave him one. So we went down the next summer and found that the cottage was just overrun with squirrels. One afternoon, my mom sort of said, yeah, of course, go out, shoot squirrels. Obviously, never expecting him to get one, but he did. When I think about G.I. Joe, I think about my brother running around our yard when we were kids. We'd play in piles of leaves. He'd be wearing his plastic army helmet, and he'd be pretending to shoot me with a twig. He's always wanted to be a G.I. Joe, and uh, now he is. I was in Halifax on vacation. That's where I met him. I was told he was the nicest guy in the world, but I didn't like him. My name is Amelia. I make music, um, write poetry, act, um, anything that has to do with entertainment.
So what's what's next? Thank you. So we like getting away from their desktops and laptops, like our users. So we're, we've experimented with community media projects like High Rise, and we've we have a new project that um, I think I'm going to skip it in light of time. But you saw the end of it in the reel there, and it's a project called Here at Home, and it's um, it's produced in partnership with a hundred million dollar Canadian mental health scientific study to measure the social and economic benefits of providing a home to the chronic homelessness and uh, how by having a home and, and support we can significantly save on healthcare costs. And so it's a national Canadian participatory project with filmmakers embedded in communities across the country, uh, creating films unique to the challenges of each city in the study. And the challenges for this project are similar to High Rise except bigger. We have 40 films that are going to end up on the site by next spring. And how do you hide a video player, right? How do you not play video in a box? And uh, how do you create an overall experience? It's a very limiting narrative structure. So our solution was to use design and music and make the experience, uh, the user experience flow in and out of the three minute videos and to create a nonlinear narrative flow. The project wraps next spring. We're getting into um, interactive performances. So with, um, we started doing, I guess, interactive concert performances are kind of our version of the, the silent film um, with the orchestra concept, but uh, around interactive. So the first time we did it uh, was for 80 people when we launched Bear 71 at Sundance last uh, January. Then we did this version um, with 900 people in a church in uh, Vancouver in May. Then we did another version to 900 people at Rooftop Films in New York, and then we're doing, doing it again to 900, for some reason it's 900 people at all these shows, um, to the Banff Mountain Film Festival um, so, you know, these audiences for us as, as web people, internet people, are, are fairly small, but we also think they're the, the right audiences for, for the kind of projects. So, I'll play you a little snippet here of, uh, of the live show. People come to Banff to see what has been lost all everywhere else. So we had three screens up there, one massive 
We had three screens, one massive 40 foot screen, two 20 foot screens on the side. We had different musicians in and out depending on where I was in the, in the performance. So there, you get a little sense of what that's like. It's hard to represent, obviously, without being there, like a, a lot of live events. And uh, the European premiere of Bear 71 is going to be, uh, Bear 71 Live is going to be at uh, IDFA in November. So um, now, school. So um, we have a, I swear that's not me. <laughs> we have a great relationship with, um, with schools in Canada. And we want to impact the um, generation the way that we grew up. We grew up. We all grew up watching NFB films. Like we'd reel the six, somebody would reel the 16 mil projector into class and roll the NFB film, and that was that was part of a Canadian upbringing. So we have now renewed this relationship uh, where we actually have a distribution deal into pretty much every school in Canada. So we can we can create work for schools again. So now we've um, we've started with this interactive graphic novel. That's a story around the War of 1812, written by Alan Grant from the UK here, and animated by our team. It's a story of a fictional family torn apart by the War of 1812. It's a simple navigation. It's really just a reading experience. Tap on the right to move ahead, tap on the left to move back. Tap in the middle to launch chapter navigation and map nav. Okay, so I'm gonna keep moving for time here. So this is targeted at kids 13 to 18 for our educational offering. I'm gonna jump to our next project really quickly. Um, this one is uh, renowned visual artist Stan Douglas. Um, his next project is being produced by our team. It's called Circa 1948 and it's quite an interesting project. It's a 3D augmented reality iPad app. That's a non-linear photorealistic story about post-World War II Vancouver and the issues between the rich and the poor, east and the west. And I'm gonna try and send it live to the screen here. So let's see if we can get that going. No, I gave my phone to... Uh, no, this, these two are transmitting to each other, so. Yeah. It might, it might be the iPad. Yeah. And I can't do the live demo. All right, I'll do. Uh, I'm sending it over wireless, but yeah. Um, here, so I'll, I'll just do the, I have a CAN backup version. I'll do it manually here as well, where. So this is all 3D vector renderings of, um, of the Hotel Vancouver in uh, post-war uh, post 1948 Vancouver. 
the, um, it's still in, um, still in early production, but those, um, those orbs of light you see represent ghosts of dead people. It's a nonlinear story, so as you approach these orbs, you catch bits of the story, and together you, you, you get a kind of a combined narrative. So I'll also show it on my screen here. So you can move around the world. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. And move in and out. I had it. Very similar to what I'm doing there. I just did that last night as a, as a backup, so. Five minutes? <laughs> all right. And, all right, so I'm gonna skip this one. Um, we'll have to come back to our experimental dance video later. And in development, so we have, uh, in development for us, we have, we have a, I don't have anything to show for these two, um, a video game in development, um, an actual, um, for the iPhone and iPad, uh, and probably both Android devices as well. Uh, we have a project with Guy, filmmaker Guy Madden that uh, might just be a live installation at the MoMA, um, possibly uh, other places as well, and it might be an interactive web project. And then um, we're getting into open source hardware. So um, this is uh, something we're prototyping right now. Um, it's, um, it's kind of hard to explain, so I'm gonna get Lance to come up and help me explain it. Lance Weiler, everyone. Uh, so uh, I'm excited we're doing a project with the NFB. It's a co-production uh, with the NFB and also with uh, Film 4.0 and, and Channel 4. We're gonna be doing some really interesting things with uh, UK talent as well. Um, but the, the idea is really it's a big data story. It's called Black Box. And uh, it kind of looks at uh, the way that data is used, your digital footprint. Uh, it's a mixture of a uh, pervasive kind of gaming and story world uh, that consists of effectively uh, a number of interesting elements, one of which is that physical black box where we'll actually manufacture anywhere from, I don't know, maybe a, it, numbers undetermined yet, but maybe upwards of a couple hundred of those that we'll actually put into the world and they'll be part of an emergent narrative. Um, and in addition to that, um, it, it kind of plays off of two design ideas. One is the idea of scarcity and abundance, and the other is kind of socially connected objects. But really, at the, the thrust of it is, is uh, a marriage of narrative and doc, because you'll move from what effectively is looking at the way data is used within the world, your understanding of your relationship with it, um, and then also into story as kind of utility, different ways that you can have a better understanding of how to manage your own digital footprint, per se. So. Excited about it. And like Lance mentioned, we're doing this in uh, co-development with Film 4.0 and Channel 4, um, Anna Higgs and Hillary Perkins that you uh, you guys probably all know, and um, and along with some UK talent that they're uh, bringing to the to the mix. Cool. So black box, everyone. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>